The other day I finished up my first assignment and a couple people reached out to me asking how was it I was able to get the text so close to the image. And in the original, this is what I did. I did a two column row and I used the image feature element. And with three lines of CSS code, I was able to get this to line up properly. Now, I think in the original training, Catherine showed to use a three column row like this and then a little bit of CSS, one line of CSS code, and we can move that over close to the image. And so that's the way I'm going to show you. I'll show you both ways, but I'm going to show you more in depth this way because, frankly, it's an easier way once you learn this one little tiny trick. And so let's just add a new row, and we're going to do a three-column row. We're going to grab that, pull it up into place, and then we're going to clone each one of these elements and drag it up into the upper. So we'll just do this as quickly as I can on my slow internet connection. Now with any of these image elements, whether it's the one on the left or one on the right, we can set this so it uh, floats to the left or the right or whatever. And so we will float this one to the left just to show you. And then once you do that, you can see inside of the orange box, it's all the way to the left-hand side of the orange box. Well, in both cases here, the images stay directly centered in the middle. So we're going to leave them both centered. And then we have our text here and you can see it has a return, it has a second line because there's not enough room. So what we wanna do is we wanna start dragging this over and saying, okay, well, where are we now? Okay, is this horrible? No, this really isn't horrible. You still have the images on either side, just barely inside of the edge of what we have down below it. But the original was inside much further. So what are we gonna do about that? And this is really just a process of playing around with this going back and forth and figuring out what works. So we're kind of getting a little wide here. So maybe I want to make this a little bit wider too. See if I can drag that over a little bit more. Well, now we're pushing them outside the edge. So now what we can do is let's come in and let's start shrinking this down by pulling in the width. All right, we're down to 90. We're down to 85. Okay, well, now he's starting to line up. He's starting to get real close here. And this is getting lined up. All right, so we're looking good. So where are we off here? We need to move this element over to the right so it comes right up near his uh, here, near the image here. So the easiest way to do that is you just come into your settings and you come down to the hashtag and you grab a hold of your CSS ID selector. And because I've already done this once, I already know that we need a negative margin of 80 pixels. So we're just going to come to our custom CSS and we're going to come in and we're going to just paste this right here. And I'll show you a little trick. If you have a number of elements that all have the exact same thing here, like where we got 80 pixels, all you got to do is you put in one element, you put in a comma, return, and the next element, and the last one does not get a comma. You just have a space and then the left curly bracket. That way you can list out a whole, you can list out 5, 10, 20 different elements that have all of the same, um, I forget what this is called, attributes or whatever this is called. Um, just list them all out and then um, just have the one or however many attributes for it, and it'll apply to all of them. So let's see what that did to our stuff. See, now he moved it over 80 pixels. Now, of course, you're not going to know it's going to be exactly 80 pixels when you start doing this. So you just have to, you just have to play around with it. You just uh, come in here, and and there's a there's a a different way to show a, show you how to do this. But at this point here, I'm going to keep you out of the developer tools and all that. Just give you an idea. So just go in and go, oh, maybe it's 50 pixels. And so you put in 50 and it moves it over. Well, that's not enough. And so you just have to go back and keep iterating until you get exactly what you want. And then, so we're a little bit off here, and I knew we would be because I know what the answer is because I've done this once, is we need to have this be at 86 pixels, not, a, I'm sorry, 86%. This, was on, this is in percent where everything else is in pixels. So here we're going to type 86. Now watch what happens here. If I click out of here, it turns it back to 85. But as you saw, it moved it over, and if I click outside of the box, it moved it over, lined it up, and if I come back in, 
it'll actually say 85.9 something, something, something with a bunch of numbers at the end here. So just because it clicks it out, just like a lot of times down here with the padding or whatever, you can type in a number and it'll kick it out. Like let's say I typed in a top heading, a number th of three, um, it'll kick it out, but then it'll actually do it. And if you come back in, it'll actually show it. So don't worry about that. So now we got that perfectly lined up. And all we had to do was put in that one line of CSS that said to make a margin right of minus 80 pixels. And anytime you put in minus, of course, it moves it that direction. So it's going to move it to the right 80 pixels. So that's how I did this one. Now, the original one, like I said, that was a little bit trickier because what we used was the image feature element. And in the image feature element, it gives you a choice of whether you want the text on the left or the text on the right. And so we want the text on the left and the image on the right. And then you can come in and you can tell it you want to split 50-50, whatever, 80-20. Well, they, even at 80-20, it still had too much of the image and too little of the text. And what that did is it caused it to, well, in fact, let me just show you. I can turn off what I have in here, just a couple of slashes will turn it off and see it moved the whole thing in this way too far. And so I wanted it to move this way further because this, this 20% over here on the right was taking up too much room. And so I wanted it to only be 10%, which would then move it to the right further. And so I had to come in and I had to tell it that I wanted instead of it being an 80 20 split that I wanted it to be a 90 10 split. So I had to grab that CSS ID selector out and then make it a 90 10 split. And then also here, what I did with the image itself is I align that image to the left, even though it's an image, you still use the text align in order to make it go to the left. So that's what I'm saying. This is a lot more complicated to do it this way than it is this simple way up here. And this line right here was the original one that I did. And then here was the one I just did in this example right now. So that's why we have two of them looking exactly the same here with the three column rows. So I hope that wasn't uh, too confusing and um, but definitely go this direction here. Just do the margin right, float it over, and then you are good to go. So reach out to me with any questions. Have a great day.